Howdy, this is Chris Bertelson with a quick clip from Nevada Learning Series. Let's take a look at the new Action Center in Windows 7. Here we have Windows 7, but first I want to take you back in time to Windows XP. And in Windows XP, Microsoft had this idea that instead of a big, ugly dialog box, they would just have a simple little balloon pop up on the screen. And that was okay the first time you saw that. You closed out of that balloon and then you saw another balloon appear and you thought, well, that's okay. There's a couple of those. And, and then another one appeared and then you tried to do some work and, and then another one appeared. So you close and then another one and then, oops, and then we got up. Oh, yep, okay. So what turned out to be a good idea ended up really interrupting you a lot. And these were all things that needed some action that wanted your attention but uh, it was not the best approach. Well, let's fast forward to Windows 7. And in Windows 7, what they've done is they've created the Action Center. And the Action Center takes all these actionable items, all these alerts, and puts them into one place that you can go to when you choose to go to them, on your time instead of their time. Ironically enough, it does pop up with one little alert the first time to tell you that it's there, but then you know that you can click on that and you get a little mini window that pops up with some action items that you could take right there, or you could open up the full action center. And here in the Action Center, we have some alerts that have come up. And if it's a yellow alert, like uh, Windows Update here, we need to set this up. That's not uh, mission critical, but it's probably something we need to attend to. So let's go in to uh, change those settings. And we uh, choose to install those updates automatically. So that's gone from the list. Now we have something critical. Our uh, firewall is not turned on. So we can go ahead and click on the button, and that will just automatically turn on the firewall. Other things that you may see uh, appear here in the Action Center are you could have access to Backup and Restore, Windows Update, and other settings that you can choose over here on the left. So the Action Center is nice. You can go to it on your terms instead of its terms and take care of things that you need to uh, take action on in your system. Now sometimes we'd like to do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting. We're having trouble with our system and rather than call the help desk or, or make a call to a product support, you can click on troubleshooting right here and it comes up with a list of various uh, areas that you might have trouble with. And on my system, I'm not hearing any sound today. I'm not uh, able to get that. So I'm going to go in and troubleshoot the audio playback. When I click on this, it says, OK, here's the troubleshooter. What do you want to do? And we're going to go into the advanced settings because that will automatically apply any repairs that I choose. And we say next. And it says, what are you having trouble with? Well, I'm having trouble with the speakers. So I have selected the speakers. And then it goes through and it checks and it discovers that my sound had been muted and it automatically unmutes my speakers, turns those back on, tells us that it was muted and now it's been fixed and the problem is solved. Now I probably would have figured that out eventually, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes down the road, but here the troubleshooter took my hand, guided me down the path, and I was able to solve that problem in very short order. And there's a lot of these troubleshooters uh, built into Windows. As you choose these different options, you can drill down and see even more troubleshooters uh, listed in here. So that's the Action Center. Another thing that uh, we're going to do is go back in time again, not as far as Windows XP, but let's go back to Windows Vista. And in Vista, they had this idea that they wanted to protect you from running programs that would change system settings or programs that you hadn't installed. And the way that it worked is that you would find a program, maybe one that I've downloaded here in the browser. And when I was ready to run that program, it would say, wait a minute, we need your permission to continue because this might be making some unauthorized changes to your computer. Is this what you want to happen? And you would say yes. And you felt good because that was a security measure. Nothing's going to happen automatically here. And that was a good thing. But it would also happen if you were copying files. If I came into this file and I right clicked and said I want to copy this and I want to paste it into a system folder over here, it would say, wait a minute, we need your permission to continue because this could be an unauthorized action, copying to a system folder. Well, that was okay. I wanted to do that, so I would say uh, continue. 
So it's protecting me, but it's uh, annoying me a little bit in the process. And the one that really made me upset was when I went in to change the uh, date and time one time. And I clicked on this button, and it said, we need your permission to continue, because this is a system setting, and we don't want you to be able to, uh, to change that without permission. And what it ended up doing was adding a lot more clicks for me to opt in to each one of these choices. So what most people ended up doing, if they had control over this, was they would just turn it off entirely. And then their system ended up being more vulnerable because they weren't protected at all. Well, this is another place that the Action Center comes to the rescue. If I click on the Action Center here and open that up, over here on the left, I see where I can change user account control settings. So this is the same tool that we had before that would uh, ask you for permission to continue. I called it the, the Mother May I button there. And by default, in Vista, it was set here to always notify you put that up at the top. Now it's going to pester you or ask your permission every time you want to make a install of software, changes to your system, or changes to Windows settings. What I do is I dial this down. Now you could move it all the way down to the bottom where it's never going to notify you, but that's not recommended because then you're not protected at all. What I do is I choose this setting right here where it won't bother me when I go to change the system time or date or something like that. But it will warn me if a program is running or something tries to install itself automatically. So this is a good balance. I'm still in control, uh, yet I don't get pestered every time I turn around like I did in Windows Vista. Now on your system, you may have this all locked down. You might not have any control based on how your system is set up. But if you do, it's nice because then you can throttle it back and you can only get those notifications when you'd like. So those are some of the great controls that we have now consolidated into the Action Center, a great way you can take action and take control of Windows 7. This has been a quick clip from Nevada Learning Series helping you get the most out of Microsoft Windows.